There's still, still a few people trickling in. We can only be a little bit patient. I know I want to reward those that have been punctual. Again, a very important social skill is being able to show up on time. I've I've noticed in the previous webinars that that some people I'm, and everyone's everyone's busy, so I I want to say, but people will come a little bit later, or when they finish up with what they're doing, they'll they'll jump on in. Let's give them one more minute, and then we'll get started. If you guys are okay with that. One more person just jumped in. Good. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Yeah, let's let's definitely get started. And and, and like I said, a few more people I'm sure will be jumping in. But as as always, this is going to be recorded and it will be put up on uh, YouTube by Jennifer later today. So um, those of you that, that are joining late can always uh, access the whole entire webinar um, at a later time. Um, this one is social skills success through online coaching. I'm, I'm excited that many people wanted to learn a little bit more about our online coaching program. And ultimately, that's, I, the last few webinars have been about, about helping you and have been about some specific things, whether in the workplace or working with your children. And for this one, I wanted to share a little bit more about what we do at the Social Skills Center for the last 21 years, and to tell you a little bit more about how we might be able to help either yourself or a loved one, a child, a relative, uh, or whatever. Uh, before I begin, I, I again wanna say, during this difficult and challenging times, I hope everybody, is continuing to be safe here in Northern Virginia. Things are loosening up a little bit. I mean, kind of feels like summer is finally in the air. Um, it's a little bit overcast today and had some rain, but but it's, it's, the weather has been nice. And I hope in your neck of the woods, it's it's been similar, but glad people are continuing to stay safe. If you've heard me speak in the past, I always like to start off the webinar with a story See the uh, uh, the the chat's open, and I just want to. Someone just jumped in. Can you please tell me where I can see the other webinars? Yes, I will. I will save that. Oh, you can see the webinars if you go to YouTube and you um, you search the Social Skills Center. They will come up. Just search the Social Skills Center, and and all the previous webinars will come up. Um, but I was saying that it, I usually start with a story. But I kind of like to mix it up from time to time too. And today's gonna be no different. I'm gonna skip the story here. And I'm gonna save the story until the end because I have a really good story that really, it's a great representation of a, a recent event with a client that we saw in our coaching program with a wonderful success story. And I think you're gonna appreciate it. So let me save the story until the end. Um, before we begin, I always like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Christopher Haley, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I'm the owner of the Social Skills Center. And as I just said, for the last 21 years, I've been teaching social skills to children, adolescents, adults, and older adults in both an individual format and through what I want to talk about even more in, in, in greater length today, our peer process social skills groups. I, I actually facilitate um, people like, no way you do that. But I've been doing this for years. I, I facilitate 12 different social skills groups every single week. And again, I've been doing this doing it a long time. I'm a huge believer that social skills, I call them essential. They're essential life skills in that if you're a really good communicator, if you're good at this, if you're good at, if you're a good listener, which is an, a, an essential social skill, if you know how to network, if you can connect with people in life, you're going to be successful. I regularly say, and people's jaws drop, I regularly say social skills correlate higher in your success or your child's success or your student's success. Social skills correlate higher with success than school grades. I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't do well in school, 
but, but whether you go to your local community college or go to Harvard, you know, if you possess these sorts of skills, my belief always has been you're going to be going places. And all the groups have historically, again, over the last two decades, been in one of my three offices in person up here in the Northern Virginia area. But three months ago, when, when we all were quarantined and, and, and locked down, we took our programs, um, like many other the health professionals did, and, and we jumped on Zoom, and we've been facilitating the groups now online, and we've had such success, specifically my associate Scott Miller and myself have had such success with the online program that we decided to expand our services, not just nationally, but now globally. So I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about the online program. Um, I, I'm, I'm really excited about what I've created from a social skills standpoint over the last two plus decades. And that's what today is gonna focus on. Um, as I had said before, because someone started with the chat, the, the chat is open. Um, that to me is the best way to be asking questions. I know this is a little bit one-sided in a webinar, but feel free to jump on in there at any point. I may have to squint because it's in my second monitor and the print's a little small. I got to figure out how to make that print a little bit bigger, but I'll take a look at it and I'll try to answer your, your questions in the moment. All right, so let's get started. Social skills success through online coaching. Before we get to the, the how we do it, first I want to start with who we help. Pretty important, right? Who do we help? Well, I, in my opinion, my opinion is biased, I'm the social skills guy, but in my opinion, social skills are needed by everyone. Really, regardless of your age, regardless of your gender, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of what part of the world you live in, I, I think social skills are essential, as I said before. So, um, you know, unless you live on an island all by yourself, and last I heard, Last I heard, islands in the Bahamas were going for around six to eight million dollars. So unless you have six to eight million dollars to buy yourself a private island, you will have to interact with people in life. So I think social skills are needed by, by virtually everybody. At the Social Skills Center, we historically have worked with all ages, from little toddlers through elementary school, middle school, through high school teenagers, young adults, middle-agers like me, and, and older adults. We do the entire lifespan because social skills are needed throughout the lifespan. They're, they're needed in your family or home environment. They're obviously needed in your social life. And they're certainly needed in school and or in your workplace. So we're, we, we use these social skills really wherever we go. And people often ask about like what different diagnoses do you work with or what sorts of concerns. And again, we're, we are very flexible and focus on many things. We see a lot of clients that have social anxiety, uh, clients that want to build up their confidence or assertiveness. We work a lot with those that, are, that have depression, um, ADHD. Um, obviously, we work a lot with spectrum disorder folk, those with autism or ASD or, and what was formerly called Asperger's. Um, people that have described themselves as feeling in the periphery or others have always felt that I was weird or I always felt out of place or a misfit. Many, many clients we have come into the Social Skills Center for that sort of stuff. And, and really anyone who just wants to increase their friend base and, and increase the amount of connections they have in life. So if you're looking to improve your social skills or, or the social skills of your child or the social skills of your student, um, I think we likely will be a great match for you. The only requirement to participate in our online program is you have a device, you have a, an, a phone, you have a tablet, um, or an iPad, a laptop, a computer, because you need to access Zoom. We use Zoom and we've been using Zoom. I've been using it in the practice for years and years and years for our staff meetings so we can connect all the different offices. Uh, but, but we subscribe to the, the paid HIPAA compliant version. So Zoom is 100% is secure. And that's the platform that we use for our online coaching. So that's who we help. It's, it's, it's varied, but global. We help, we help a lot of people. Now, how do we do it? And this is how we do it. We offer online 
two different services. We offer an individual coaching service, which a coaching service, which I'll talk about first. And then I'll talk about uh, in greater detail our, our group coaching service because we have a one of a kind way of, of working with our clients. But to start with the individual coaching, it's, it's exactly like it sounds. Uh, we work one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, and so a social skills coach and you would get together online via Zoom. Now, the beauty of the individual coaching is that it's specifically tailored to your needs. The, the goals that are established early on are always individualized. Of course, they would have to be. And in an early meeting, we'll assess where you're at, and then we'll spend time talking about where you want to go, meaning we'll set goals based on your needs, based on your desires. Some examples, um, things that have come through the door recently is an adult, for example, that wants to increase confidence or increase assertiveness in the workplace. A great candidate for some individual coaching through the social skills uh, coaching program. Uh, we had this come through the door recently, a high schooler who experienced social anxiety throughout her academic, um, uh, throughout schooling. Um, when she was younger and throughout high school, she's going off to a four-year college. Well, <laughs> hopefully she's going to be going off to a four-year college, depending on if the college is, is open. But she, the plan is for her to go off to college in mid-August, and she wants to improve her comfort level around peers. Um, we've had young kids who are even the toddlers that are in need of, of improving social skills because the parents have noticed at a play date that their child needs to improve these skills. And in those cases, we typically work just with the parent, but we've had that come through. So all those are, are great candidates for the individual coaching approach. And in our, in our coaching approach, we typically follow a 50 minute uh, session that we hold once a week. Um, usually meeting once a week is what is ideal. We, we are flexible in the approach to some, some clients when we meet every other week. But typically when you start off, you want to develop a relationship with the coach that you work with. And so starting off for a 50 minute session once a week is typically ideal. And that's a really brief synopsis of the individual coaching program, but because time's limited, I'm going to jump right onto the group stuff. Now, we, we, I, I've always prided myself on facilitating the groups differently. And the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But here are several benefits to teaching social skills through a group coaching format. Um, number one, again, we're very unique this way. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the social skills center, we always match by two essential criteria, age, and level of functioning. You need both of those criteria in order to have a really good social skills group match. Most, most programs don't do that. Um, and then that leads to a lack of connection among the group members. So we match by age and we match by level of functioning, two essential criteria. Another big benefit of social skills groups in the online format is that peer feedback at times Peer feedback is far more, I'll give you an example. Peer feedback is far more powerful than the feedback a parent can give a kid, or even, I'll talk about myself, or even the impact that I, as a psychologist and as a social skills coach, can have on a child. Here's an example. Um, you may have actually lived this. You have a 13-year-old boy, 13-year-old teen, who struggles with hygiene. And <laughs> some of you might be laughing. I know many parents that go through the same struggles. The, but maybe he showers every now and again. You know, maybe he wears deodorant every now and again, but he doesn't brush his teeth in the morning. Like, wow. All right. So uh, the parents are on him. Dude, you got to brush your teeth, man. That's pretty gross. The good old Dr. Haley's on him. It's like, come on, man. Hey, this is a really important social skill. You need to be brushing your teeth every morning in one ear, out the other. Then the 13 year old goes off to middle school. Yes, he does. And he sits at a desk and he turns to someone and strikes up a conversation. And the person says, oh, you got bad breath. <laughs> and then what happens? And then he, he probably runs home, brushes his teeth. He probably brushes his teeth six times a day. And carry some mints with him or some gum or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> but this, that happens. Peer feedback 
can be more powerful than feedback from a parent or a psychologist. Great. In the group, you're going to get a lot of feedback from your peers, both good and bad. And, and, and constructive criticism, we, we need to hear that at times. Also with the groups, it's interesting. I've always, for 21 years, I've, I've treated these groups like a little microcosm for the real world. And what I mean by this is whatever social skills deficit or deficits you or your child would possess, whatever appears out in the real world, when you come into a social skills group, those same deficits are going to exist because it's a social situation. Here's an example. Someone who has poor eye contact in the real world is going to present to one of our groups and have a lot of difficulty looking at people's faces on the screen. They're going to have that same concern. Or uh, another, here's a good example too. Um, we, we all know someone like this. I like, it's one of my favorite examples is someone who dominates, dominates conversations. We all know someone that when you engage them, it's going to be 95% of the time they're talking and 5% of the time you're allowed to jump, jump in and, and, and offer a response. So someone who dominates conversations out here in the real world, they're going to come into the group and they're going to do and engage in that same behavior. So that's a perfect opportunity for the coach, whoever's coaching that group, to go in and teach that person about, hey, you're dominating the conversation. Let's come up with a different way of responding. Let's, let's focus a little bit more on listening. And then what we do is we take that skill and teach it in the microcosm, in the group, with the hope and expectation that those skills generalize out to the real world. And they often do, because if you can learn the skill in the small group, then you possess that skill. And then we have you go practice it out in the real world. If the skill, if the skill was not generalizable, then it wouldn't make sense to, to even participate in the group. So we've had a lot of success with these skills that we teach in the group online to generalize to real world experiences. From, from a coaching standpoint, the group is beneficial, you know, for me and the other coaches, because I can witness, I can witness firsthand how that particular individual is responding to others. So going back to the individual coaching, and it, with individual coaching, I will guide someone and recommend and, and teach someone skills. Then they go off in the real world for a week. They practice those skills. Then they come back and report and share with me how they did. The group is different. In the group, I'll offer an intervention, and then I can sit back and see in the moment, watching the screen, how that individual responds with the feedback that I provided, and are they using that skill among their interactions with, with the other group members? So I get to see interventions and feedback and implement it in the moment, and then see how they respond firsthand. And if, if they don't respond well, I can jump in again and teach that same skill. It happens sometimes, and teach the same skill in the moment again and again until we're able to, to absorb it and incorporate that skill into their interactions with others. The, the group is great because they, the interventions that we provide are immediate, they're in the moment, and as we'll get to in a second, it's, it's all real life, which is very different than what, what other people do with their groups. Um, but I have to say this, while our goal is to teach specific skills, there's something deeper that goes on in these groups and and this it as i i when i first started teaching the social skills groups 21 years ago it was very goal specific and goal or let me teach the skills teach the skills there's something deeper that goes on in a group at the very least this is a safe place for someone to come regardless of your age because you're interacting with same age people of the same level of functioning this is a safe place to come so you can have positive interactions with your peers. So you can feel accepted. You can feel a sense of belonging. And I'll tell you guys, and this comes from my core, there is such a healing factor to feeling like you're part of a group. So many people that join the groups, they, they feel on an island all by themselves. And they've probably felt that way from some time. A lot of the kids over the 21 years I've been doing the groups, they, they say, this is the only safe place that I can come to because I'm bullied at school. You know, I, my parents are hard on me at home. 
I can come here for 50 minutes and know that I'm gonna feel connected, I'm gonna feel a sense of, of appreciation and validation from those around me. That's what matters the most. The skills are awesome, that's what we're all about. But, but that deeper, the deeper meaning and the deeper connection is ultimately to me what it's all about. There's, there's something so beneficial to that. Let's move on. All right, let me take a quick sip of water. And if you've heard my other webinars, you, I always say I pride myself on thinking outside the box, doing things differently than everybody else. Well, you're gonna learn right now that we facilitate our groups very differently than everybody else. 99% of the social skills groups that are out there, um, and uh, people typically don't do online groups like us, where again, we're leaders in the field with that, but most everyone does their in-person in their office groups with what's called structured educational groups. You can see from the slide, right? This is, there's a book there. It, it, the, the skills are taught out of a manual. And the, the structured groups or the educational groups almost always operate on a time limited model. And what that means, it's, a, it's an eight session program or I've seen 10 or even 12 session models out there. And the, the skill that's taught, the one skill that's taught each week is taught out of a book. It might be like this. Uh, okay, chapter one, eye contact. So week one, we'll teach eye contact. Week two, maybe something like, hey, how do you introduce yourself to somebody new? And then so on and so forth. And then after week eight, you graduate or, or do whatever it is that, that they do. Um, but I've always had a problem with this model. Yeah, I have many problems with it. Let me share one with you. Is you, you typically pay for them up front, by the way, too, which I'm not a fan of. So you'll pay for the eight session model in its entirety. But I was always thinking this as a parent. What if, what if my kid already has the skill that they're teaching in week four? Do I like get my money back for that meeting? Do I have to pay for that week anyway? Why would I send my kid to, to something if they already possess the skill? And worse yet, worse yet, what if my kid needs all eight weeks of that, but week four, they're sick and can't attend? Does that mean they don't get that skill? I, I, I'm a big, I always quote Seinfeld. It, there was a great Seinfeld episode with um, the guy from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Uh, um, Judge Reinhold is his name. It was the, you guys, if you know Seinfeld, you'll laugh. It's the Close Talker episode. And in the Close Talker episode, uh, Judge Reinhold befriends Mr. and Mrs. Seinfeld. They're in town from New York. And he like, he's, he's a very social guy. His social skills are really good. He, he invites them on the town. He takes them to a show and to this restaurant and that place. So he's very socially skilled. He just has one flaw. He's a bit of a close talker. Hi, Mrs. Seinfeld. How you doing? Would you like to go to the movies today? <laughs> Get right up to their face. This is a guy. This is a guy that participated in one of these structured groups. He just must have missed the week on personal space. <laughs> I just, I, what happens if you miss the week? I just, I don't know. <laughs> um, the, the, a couple other issues I have, and then we'll move on. They use role playing. I'm not a big fan of role playing because it's, it's scripted. It's a good technique, but it's just, it's just, it doesn't result in natural flowing interactions, which is what we're all about. They, the, those that use these groups, they measure success on a checklist usually. So before you start the group, the parent gets the checklist or you get the checklist if you're an adult. And if there's 10 different items, maybe pre-group, you check off four. You know, 10 out of 10 perfect social skills. So you check off four, then you participate for the eight weeks or whatever. And at the end, they give you the same checklist. Oh, well, let me, uh, okay, I check off six. Oh, wow, we had a successful program. We went from four out of 10 to six out of 10. My question is, is that real life success? I don't think so. I don't think so. And, and getting back to, to, the, to the group matches, most structured educational groups are, they have a, a group for six to 10 year olds. You know, six and 10 year olds are very, I don't want a six and a 10 year old in the same group or, or like even worse, 13 year olds and 17 year olds. If I was a, 17, a 13 to 17 year old group, if I'm 17, 
I'm not doing group with a 13 year old. And, and then the level of functioning will vary. I just, um, when I first started the social skills groups, I, I, in 1999, this is how I did them. And at, the kids would come in and I'd say, okay, guys, let's turn to chapter seven. And they'd be like, oh, they'd roll their eyes. The poor kids were in school all day. And it's like, oh, let's go see, let's go see Dr. Haley and we'll get educated some more. So I don't, you can see where I'm going. You can't teach social skills out of a book. And, and you, you're probably thinking why, why do therapists and coaches use this approach? I, because it's easy and I, because it's, it's predictable. All you have to do is go in and, and let's open up to chapter five. You know, it's, it's controlled. My life isn't easy. My life isn't always predictable and, and my life isn't always controllable. So I've never been a huge fan of that. I'm going to jump now to my peer process social skills groups, but there's one quick comment that I want to check. Curious as to why you really should turn social skills and not uh, social oh, emotional skills, given the need for SEL. Is there an emphasis in your programs with social skills? We, uh, the question has to do with why we call, uh, why I emphasize social skills instead of the more current term of the social emotional skills. The, no, there's no real reason. Um, I'm a little bit old school, a little bit old fashioned in that when I adopt a term like the social skills, I've been using that one for 21 years. But, but part of our approach, which you'll learn in a second, um, uh, Barry, part of the approach you learn is that we focus on not just the social skills, but the emotional skills as well. So I, I hope that that answers your question. Um, now, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, good social skills, Barry. The, the, let me tell you about my approach, our peer process social skills groups. Um, we don't teach out of a book. I, you, you, I'm sure you gathered that. I don't make it educational. It's not structured and scripted. Um, in my groups, we don't focus on teaching one specific skill. I, I, I don't see the usefulness in that. Rather, um, we focus on interactions. I want natural flowing interactions on a computer screen. I want natural flowing interactions among the group members in a real life natural way. All right. I hope that makes sense. I, I want the communication and the interaction among the group members to flow. Nothing is scripted in our groups because, because real life is not scripted. So I typically, typically, not always, but I typically don't use role play as an intervention. Um, instead, the intervention that I use, and that we use at the Social Skills Center, is called incidental teaching. And what incidental teaching involves is teaching skills in the moment when the situation or the behavior or the feeling, getting back to the question, or the feeling comes up. So this allows for the coach to teach multiple skills, each and every group, because we know and understand the needs of each individual group member and that those needs are unique to that person. Everybody has different needs. So we teach many different skills depending on the flow in the, or the interactions uh, among the group members. And it's, this gives the coach so much greater flexibility to, to provide unique, direct, specific feedback to each and every group participant. And the feedback I may give one group member on a screen is gonna be very different than the feedback I give a different group member. So the experience in a peer process group is each person receives intervention based on what they need and what's going on in the moment. And as I said, because we match by age, and level of functioning, the group members have a much greater likelihood of connecting. And, and that connection, as I said earlier, is paramount to healing. Um, and uh, another huge difference with us in the structured groups is that our groups are ongoing. We, when, when a child joins a group, and they can join at any point, at any time, and they participate for whether it's three sessions and gain the skills they need, or 30 sessions and then they gain the skills they need and then they terminate, you can stay as long as you'd like. As long as you're gaining skills and having a positive group experience, you can be with us. So we have some that come for eight, eight sessions, they gain the skills they need and they terminate, 
then we just welcome a new group member in. And so our groups are always evolving and always ongoing. You have different faces coming into the group, which is so important because we all have different faces coming into our lives. It's a very natural, very real life way of teaching these essential skills. So that gives you a little bit of information on the theory behind it. Now let me tell you, give you a little bit more information on the specifics of what goes on in a group. I've always been a big fan of leadership. So when I developed peer process social skills groups 20 years ago, I said, I want to teach leadership right from the outset. So when you or a child or a student joins the group, um, we rotate who the group leader is. This is unique. People don't do this in these structured groups. But to me, it's a real life way to teach someone, for example, how to run a meeting. So each week, someone's a group leader. One of the group members is a group leader. And we just rotate the group leader. So over the course of many weeks, you'll have several opportunities to be this group leader. And we do this, yes, our, our youngest groups online are eight years old. Even the eight-year-old, we start them young, even the eight-year-olds have a chance to be a group leader. Now, I'm jumping in more using incidental teaching with the younger kids, obviously, as a group leader. I wouldn't expect them to, I wouldn't expect so, an eight-year-old to sit up there like they're the CEO of a board meeting. But So we start slow. But to be able to take on that, and, and I'll be honest with you, the kids love it. People love being the group leader. So when I'll say, hey, Mike, it's your turn to be the group leader today. Oh, cool, I get to be the group leader. So they really look forward to it and, and enjoy it. Now, after we decide who the group leader is, it's their responsibility to go around the screen and check in each individual member. But the question that they ask is really not dictated by me unless they need a little bit of help. So the question might be, and, and before I get to the question, we always call people by name. Calling people by name is a huge social skill, especially when you see the same faces on the screen again and again. So it might be something like, hey, Ethan, how was your weekend? Just to start the conversation. Or, um, hey, Bob, uh, school ended last week. How was the last week of school? Or how did your exams go? Um, and that group leader is allowed to start with any question they want. After the question is asked, and that individual checks in and responds, then it's up to the entire group to ask really good, solid follow-up questions in order to keep the conversation going. And sometimes it's the group leader asking the question. Sometimes it's other, others say, I think we should ask him this, or let's ask this follow-up question. What we're looking for is flow. I'm looking for flow among the different uh, the different participants. And as this flow goes on as the coach, then I jump in and I start using this incidental teaching approach. For example, if a child is very quiet and a question is asked and there's some back and forth and there's a little bit of a lull in the conversation, then it's my job as the coach is to say, hey, um, um, Julie, do you have any thoughts about what was said? And then, then I can bring her into the conversation. Or if she says no, I say, well, let me give you some help. How about asking this question? Or how about, why don't we, we, have, we find out about this? And so that way I can teach a quiet group member how to jump into conversations. We, you know, empathy is brought up a lot. Um, I've, I've had before uh, a child in tears, you know, my dog, we just had to put my dog down. And, and then someone, not a dog person would say, yeah, but it's just a dog, you know, it's, it's not a person. <laughs> and then the poor child will cry. It's like, I, let's focus on empathy. You know, maybe you're not a dog person, but other, to other people, a dog, that's like part of their family. It's like a family member. So let's have some empathy for that person. Could you have responded in a different way? Um, if, if a group member brings up a problem or an issue, um, my role would be, has anyone ever experienced this before? Or, or how would you all handle this situation? Or what advice do you have for this person? The person is coming in with X problem. If you've had this problem before, let's, what have you done to try to solve it? Have you, have you communicated to your parents about it? Uh, if someone was mean to you on the playground, were you assertive? How did you handle it? What did you say? Hmm? All the while, the incidental teaching approach is implemented, and, and everything, again, is, is from, is we focus on natural, flowing communication. Um, we, if, you, if you're interested in learning more about the incidental teaching, impro teaching approach, if you go to the website, uh, my website, socialskillscenter.com, 
and under resources, one of the tabs, if you click on resources, you'll see book slash DVD. Um, this is all free. Uh, a while back, uh, my, uh, my associate Scott Miller and I, we actually wrote the second edition of the book. We haven't put it up yet. The first edition is there, but we're going to get the second edition up. But the, the, the thing that I wanted to share there is in the DVD section, um, no one has DVD players anymore, so we just get it online. You can click on video vignettes and you'll see me in action, uh, real life, doing the incidental teaching approach um, within a group. And you'll see how I handle incidental teaching and how I interact and how the other group members interact. It's a great way to see what goes on. I, I'll go off script just for a second because this is really important. Back in, back in my doctoral training days, back in the 90s, um, I was trained by some really well-known psychologists. So I got some really good training. They were awesome people. But as they were supervising me, I always would sit back and say, yeah, that's cool. I yeah, thank you for helping. But, but what do you do when you're in the room? I always thought I never asked that. I'm like, I wonder what you do or what you say when you're in the room with that client. So in order to, I, I call it demystifying, in order to demystify what I do. So parents, so teachers, so someone joining the group will know exactly how it goes. I filmed the DVDs and we, we, don't have the, uh, uh, we don't have the video vignettes yet of an online group, but that will be coming. But you can go there and you, you'll see me, it's all free. You can see me in action using the approach. Uh, for, the, for, for kids and adults, the, the group is the flowing interactions and, and, and the coach teaching the social skills. For the younger kids, 11 and under, um, I always do something fun at the end. The kids always look forward to it. I want them ending with a smile on their face. Um, so we'll always finish up maybe with the last 10 minutes. Um, I should have said that the groups are 50 minutes as well. So for the younger kids, I don't expect them to be able to listen and settle for a full 50 minutes. But knowing that they're looking forward to doing something fun at the end, we always end with something fun. Like I didn't expect this to be fun, but in the background in Zoom, in the background here, you can change it to waves or being in space. You can put up your own picture. So they'll do the funniest background and they come up with some, <laughs> some funny ones. <laughs> one kid had a really big Sprite can. He was going like this. It's really funny. <laughs> he won that one. Uh, but there's also a whiteboard that we do Pictionary. We play Hangman, you know, Uno Online and stuff like that. Mm. I do want to be a hundred percent transparent with you about our online coaching program, the, the for, for the groups. The, the our program is designed for the higher functioning population. It's it's best for clients who are verbal. It's best for clients who can communicate back back and forth with each, with each other. Um, even even someone with social anxiety that has a tough time speaking, our group is great for someone like that because I know over time, and I'm going to share an example in a second where you'll get it. Um, but if, if, if someone is not able to even communicate a little bit, there are some, some better options. Uh, for the younger ones, you have to be able to listen and settle for brief periods of time. Otherwise, it becomes a, dis a distraction, even online to the other group members. Um, for, for those that are lower functioning, um, my first master's degree is in ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis, and that's a better option in order to learn the basic skills before you consider uh, joining one of my peer process social skills groups. So, so I want to be upfront with everybody that it's for more of a higher functioning population where we already have a, a, a basic skill set of interacting. Uh, the next uh, question I have down there is about parent meetings. For all minors, parent meetings are a must. It's an essential piece of our program. And what a parent meeting is, is once a month, um, I'll get online with mom, dad, or both of them, and we'll, talk, we'll spend 50 minutes talking about multiple things. Number one, I need updates. Mom and I, I see a child for 50 minutes once a week, and mom and dad are my eyes and my ears. So I want to compare what's going on in the real world based on what they say, to what I see in the little microcosm of the group. And I share with the parents uh, what's going on in the group, skills that are being taught. And then I always spend time coaching parents on what they might be able to do differently uh, from a parenting standpoint in order to enhance these essential skills with their child. So parent meetings are a must if your child is a minor. And finally, how do we measure success? Ha, huh, not with a checklist. Not with a checklist. Here's my rule of thumb. If a child comes to one of my groups 
and doesn't have any friends. If after participating in an online group for X amount of time, if they've made one friend in the community or in school, that's how I define success. That's real life. If I have a child who comes in with five friends, they're already able to make and maintain a few relationships. If they come in having five friendships and at the end when it's time for them to leave after they've gained skills that they have eight friends or 10, that's how I define success. Are you learning skills that are gonna get you connected in real life with people? You know, and again, I also look at, hey, did the person, is the individual connecting with other group members? Are they showing greater social confidence? But, but my measure is, are, are they making friends? That's really, really important, really important. I had promised you I was gonna end with a story about, uh, about the social skills groups. So here it is. The, right after the quarantine in mid-March, mid we, like most health professionals, transitioned their practices to online and we were, we were already using Zoom, so it was an easy transition for us. But I've started facilitating all 12 groups online and I had a 12 year old that the parents wanted to participate in one of my groups. And again, we matched by age. So I put him with other 12 year olds and he was high functioning. So he went in a high functioning group. Um, but he had severe social anxiety. I really felt bad for him, really struggled in interacting with any same age peer, a long history of social anxiety. So we always have an intake. I had an intake online with the parent and the child to learn about the history, a little bit more about what's going on. Um, and then prior to, to welcoming someone in group, I always like to have a couple individual appointments to, to find out what their social strengths are and also their social deficits. So I know when we get to the group, what I need to focus on with that particular member. And so we had a couple one-on-one -on -one appointments. Also that the one-on-one -on -one appointments are, are to help with connecting. I always wanna have a, an awesome relationship with, with the clients that I'm seeing online. Um, so we participated in these two programs, but when it was time to join the social skills group, you have the ability to turn your camera on or turn your camera off. So for the first group, this is, if you're watching my camera, that's what I saw. It was totally black. His, his name was there. So we, we knew he was present, but his anxiety was high enough that he just didn't feel comfortable having the camera on. Yep, and, we, you know, and that's totally cool. That's totally fine. He would interact with the other group members. He would answer questions. He just didn't feel comfortable turning his, his camera on. And um, I spoke with mom and dad. They said that after group, he'd say, yeah, I had a really good time. I, I had a good experience. I liked participating. And it must have been about like session four where all of a sudden, I'm not sure what happened, but he kind of like went for it. And it was boom. He went from black to seeing him. And I'm like, wow. And everyone's like, oh, hey, that's what, you, that's what you look like. And and from that point on, it was full speed ahead. And all it took for him to overcome the hurdle was, was just a mindset shift and a mindset change that this is safe, that, that these people are cool. I, I like them. I interact with them. I feel I feel part of something. And and he was in my group last night. He was in my group last night. And and so we're three months later, and he's he's doing so much better with the social anxiety. Now, we haven't totally put it to test because obviously with, with quarantining and social distancing, but just that alone has, is, has been a really, really successful, huge step for him. And, and the report the, he's developed connections with the other group members and, and the parents are reporting greater confidence and, and less anxiety. It, it's a success, a success story. Um, we've had many of them. I'm, I'm sure we'll have several more with, with our online program. When I bump the camera, I know I'm all blurry now. I'm not even sure how to fix that, but, <laughs> but we're almost done. So if you don't mind putting up with the blur for one second. Um, how do you get started in our online coaching program, whether that be the individual coaching program or the group? Visit us at socialskillscenter.com. Um, there's an FAQ for the online program. Um, it'll share the information that we talked about today, plus some additional things. Um, or if you have any questions, you can email me at drhaley at socialskillscenter.com. And for the online program, um, I'm offering currently a free 15 minute phone consultation, or we can make it a Zoom consultation too if, uh, if you wanna do it. And so we can see face to face. Uh, we have the new, our new groups are forming as we speak. We have availability for some individual coaching clients as well.
You might also want to mention a couple things that to learn more about us, please visit us on Facebook um, where the Social Skills Center is the business and our Facebook group, which is rapidly growing called Social Skills Circle. And what else did I want to add? Oh, if you have any questions, please jump in now. Oh, thank you again, Michelle. Um, I'm, thank you for joining us. Michelle's been joining us regularly. I thank you for that. Next Thursday, next Thursday, I'm going to be offering a free general Q&A for any parents or teachers or whoever to come in and ask me social skills. I'm going to be having this next Thursday at 11 a.m. It'll be via Zoom. And so we'll all be able to see each other or if you don't feel comfortable. You can make your, you can make your screen black. But I'm going to be having a general Q&A for anyone who has any sort of social skills question for me. Um, if you're interested in participating in that and you want to get on the list right away, again, because I think I'll probably have 10 max, shoot me an email right after this and I'll get you on the list. I'll send you the link. Um, I'll send you the link later this evening with what it is. But, but for those that participated today, I'll almost guarantee that I can get you in and, and have a slot. Um, as always, I, I, I appreciate your attendance. I, I, I try to keep this to 30 minutes and I think it's, it's always been around 45. So I think from now on, I'm gonna be calling our webinars 45 minute webinars. I, I see that everybody stayed and I really appreciate that. Um, and, and I thank you for taking the time to be here. If there's any other questions, please put that in the chat. And if you don't feel comfortable putting something in the chat, uh, feel free to shoot me an email and, uh, and I'll, I'm, I'm really good with getting back to people. I'll be, be more than happy to get back to you and answer any questions that you have. All right. Thank you all for, for oh, here we go. Oh, you are very welcome, um, Nabiha. You're very welcome. I said, thank you for all you do. Yeah, I, it, this is, for, if you watch my other webinars, my passion has always been the social skills ever since I was a little kid. And, and my goal and my mission, I'm, I'm so excited this year because in, I've been helping those in the Northern Virginia, DC, Maryland area for, again, for 21 years. And, and the, 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 the quarantine with coronavirus, it just really opened my eyes that I, could, I can do so much more than that and take this service and, and again, make it national and global. So now we can reach a greater market and, and really get in and teach those who need it these essential life skills. I want people to be successful. I want people to be happy. I want people to be healthy. And that's what these social skills are all about. Oh, you're welcome, Melania. You're very welcome. All right, guys, I'm gonna sign off. Uh, have yourselves a, oh, thank you so much, by the way. How can we attend next Thursday? Uh, send me an email, just send me an email. Um, do it sooner rather than later to Dr. Haley at socialskillscenter.com. Do it sooner rather than later, and uh, I'll get you on the list right away. Oh, thank you very much, Julie. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, thank you all for attending.